I'm Paul McDonald, and um, due to some requests on the net about how I did my uh, effect in my film Spring City 4 on the effect of like a dual colour or quad colour um, effect with, with green screen actors, I thought I'd uh, post this tutorial. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. If I just boot up a, an early cut of the film, and you can see that uh, you've got the actors and then a background in the in the rear. Now, actually, what how this worked was that the, the actors were all on green screen like that, but then the greens removed, bit of jiggery pokery later, and the background's put in. It's all color corrected, and you get the scene. Now that all the backgrounds were created in Google SketchUp, and uh, were then rendered in another program called Kirkithea, uh, and then composited into the frame with Apple Motion. So this is how we did it. This is the piece that we're going to be. I'm going to be using for the example, and uh, it's very short, but it just give you an idea of how it works. Okay, so first thing, I had to build sets in SketchUp for each scene. The set I'm going to use is one that I built, uh, which very much tried to be like a tech, techie server room, if you like, servers and computers and things like that in the scene. Now, Google Warehouse is a great place to um, to find stuff for SketchUp. You can get all sorts of bits and bobs and also it's very very easy to uh, to build your own as well. But uh, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you build it to the scale that it would be in real life. So if you know if the room is three meters tall then build it three meters tall in SketchUp and then you get a really good idea of scale and it works much better when you're actually planting your actors in. So anyway, so once something's built in SketchUp like this, it's then um, exported to in, as an XML file into a program called Kirkithea. Now Kirkithea is a, a freeware program that you can download off the net. It's spelled K-E-R-K-Y-T-H-E-A if you want to uh, Google it. And um, it, they provide a plugin for, for SketchUp so that you can export your file as an XML file that Kirkithea can understand. And what you end up with is something like this. Okay, so this is the same model exported out of SketchUp and into this program called Kirkithea. And the good thing about Kirkithea is, is that it renders to a quality much better than SketchUp does, so that you can get a much better result from your SketchUp models. Um, and also you can add lights and direct those lights and control the parameters of each light so you can turn it up or turn it down to make it darker or lighter if you know however you want it to be okay so once the models in Kirkithea I have to position the camera so that it rep so it gives a good representation of where the real camera was in the real world so that when I put the actor in front of the scene it's going to match up so it's a case of and I'm sure there's probably an easy way to do this and um, I'd love to know it <laughs> but uh, basically I do it by sight so move the camera around once I look like I've got a scene that I'm fairly happy with and then I render it but just as a rough render, so very low res and also low setting, so it doesn't take very long to render. And you end up with a result. And if you click the image, then it gives you the result there. So what you can do at this point is you can just take that rough plate and put it in your composition to see whether it works, see whether it matches up. And if it does, then go back, render a better quality version, and then put that in. However, for this demo, it's not too important that it matches up perfectly with the foreground actor. 
so I think we'll just go for that. So what I'm going to do now is change the settings so that it's a much higher resolution. For the film I pick 1024768 and we'll pick high ray tracing but I highly advise that if you want really good quality backgrounds then you go for the high photon map. Okay, it's done. So if you have a look at the image, that's pretty good. It's okay as a starting point. So if we save that, it will save it as a JPEG. I think I'm just going to put it in here and put it in the background. Save that. Okay. So now on to Apple Motion. So here we have Apple Motion, and I have um, one group with the video clip loaded in already. So you can see the foreground actor and the green screen. Now, for removing the green screen, I used a program called Primat Kia Pro, which is not something that comes with Motion, but Motion does come with its own keying programs. But for this, I used Primat Kia Pro. So if I activate that, and then we'll just have a quick look at the settings for it. Okay. So basically, if I reset this, just so we can see, basically the process for removing the green screen is somewhere is something like this. First of all, click Auto Setup, and that does the its best job to work out all of the green and remove as much of it as possible. Now it does a pretty good job from the beginning, and then you can tweak it by cleaning the foreground area if you need to tweak any more. Uh, it also has options for de-artifacting uh, for DV cameras, so it takes some of the jaggedness and things like that out of the out of the shot around the edges. One thing to definitely do is have a look at the matte and if you've got pure white for the subject that you want to keep and or pure black for the subject you, for the the material that you want to remove then you, you're on you're along the right lines. And the other thing to have a look at is the spill. Now if I just show you if I take off the spill suppressor, or spill killer as it's called, you'll see here that the light from the green screen is bouncing back onto the actor. But the Primac here has a great spill suppressor. So if I click that, activate it, and uh, I find that having the strength turned up almost all the way telling it that it's green that I want to suppress. It does a pretty good job. I mean, that's pretty good for a first time. So we'll go with that. 